Here's a question that was asked to me in class by a student who was a bit confused about how to approach this. The question generated some really good discussion amongst the students, and we also discussed it in the staff room as well. I'd like to share my solution to this, and I hope it offers a bit of an explanation as to how we go about solving this problem and why this is the correct way, and why other methods are insufficient to completely solve this problem correctly. So the question says, given that the modulus of z plus 4 on z equals 2, find the range of values of the modulus of z. Now we're asked to find the range of values of the modulus of z, so that means we want to find some upper bound and some lower bound for this. And straight away when I think about the modulus of z, or the modulus of anything with an upper and lower bound, my mind instantly goes to the triangle inequality. So I'm going to write down the triangle inequality here which says that the modulus of z plus or minus w, doesn't matter whether this is a plus or a minus, but the modulus of z plus or minus w is less than or equal to the modulus of z plus the modulus of w. This is what we would call the triangle inequality here. But also, we have another triangle inequality, often known as the reverse triangle inequality, which says that that sum, z plus w, its modulus is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the difference between those two individual moduli, modulus of z and modulus of w. And we put the absolute values around this because we don't know which of these two, modulus of z and modulus of w, is larger. So that's what the absolute value does. It just takes care of the fact that this expression could be negative. Now, the question is, how do I apply this to this problem? Well, I think it's pretty clear that we have to use this given condition the modulus of z plus 4 on the modulus, sorry, the modulus of z plus 4 on z equals 2. Now this expression in here is going to be my z plus w. z is just going to be z, but w is going to be 4 on z. So I'm going to apply both of these uh, inequalities, the normal triangle inequality and the reverse triangle inequality. And the reason for that is because I know that both of these, whether it's the reverse or the regular triangle inequality, they both must be true. For whatever values of the modulus of z that I get, both of these inequalities, this lower inequality here and then this upper inequality, they both have to hold true. So I'm going to apply the upper or the regular triangle inequality, find a value, a range of values for the modulus of z, and then I'm going to do the same for the reverse triangle inequality, find a range of values for z, the modulus of z I mean, and from that, I have to take the intersection. That's because only in the intersection are both inequalities satisfied. So it's not enough to just apply the normal triangle inequality. And it's not enough to just apply the reverse triangle inequality. Both inequalities have to be applied and then solved for the range of values of the modulus of z. So let's go about doing that. We're going to start with the regular triangle inequality and see what that gives us. So. Let's apply the regular triangle inequality now to this condition. So we have that 2 is equal to the modulus of z plus 4 on z. And by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to the modulus of z plus the modulus of 4 on z. And I'll say by the triangle inequality here. Now, what this will turn into is a quadratic inequality, which we can solve to find the appropriate range of values of z. So I'm going to multiply everything by the modulus of z, which is safe to do because it's non-negative, and we'll get the following. After bringing everything to one side, the modulus of z squared minus 2 times the modulus of z plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Now if I complete the square here, I'll get that the modulus of z minus 1 all squared plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. And, well, this is going to be true for any value of the modulus of z, because what we have inside our brackets is a real number. And I know that when I square a real number, I'll be non-negative. And then when I add 3 to a non-negative number, then certainly that's going to be greater than 0. It won't even be equal to 0. It's going to be strictly greater than 0. So this will be true regardless of the value of the modulus of z. So I can say, therefore, the modulus of z could be any real number. 
Now, of course, I know that the modulus of Z is always non-negative. And in fact, I know it's always positive for this question because Z can't be zero. Otherwise, we'd have a zero in our denominator. So actually, I know that the modulus of Z has to be a positive real number. But I'll just leave that for now. This will be our range of values from the normal triangle inequality, the regular triangle inequality. Now we're going to have to solve the reverse triangle inequality and see what range of values we get from that. So we start off again with 2 equal to the modulus of Z plus 4 on Z. And I'm going to apply the reverse triangle inequality, which says that this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the modulus of Z minus the modulus of 4 on Z. Now I'm going to write this in a slightly more familiar form for myself, which is that I've got the modulus of, or the absolute value of the modulus of Z minus 4 on the modulus of Z is less than or equal to 2. And so this turns into an absolute value inequality. And that splits into two parts. The first is that we have the modulus of Z minus 4 on the modulus of Z is less than or equal to 2. And then we have the modulus of Z minus 4 on the modulus of Z is greater than or equal to negative 2. And now we have to solve both of these. So I already have a range of values from the regular triangle inequality, which is that Z is a real number. Now I need to solve these two, get another two different ranges and find the intersection of these. So it's going to be the same process. Turn this into a quadratic inequality, turn this into a quadratic inequality and solve. So we have the modulus of Z squared minus two times the modulus of Z minus four is less than or equal to zero. Let's complete the square. Modulus of Z minus one all squared minus five is greater than or equal to zero. Now, if I think about this, let's see, we're going to have one plus or minus root five as our two x intercepts here. So let me quickly draw that up. Okay, so that's what our parabola looks like. I can get rid of this now because I no longer need it. And I want to know what values of the modulus of Z are going to make this less than or equal to zero. So I want to be along that region there. So I want to be in between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. Okay, so this tells me then that I need to be less than or equal to this, but greater than, sorry, greater than or equal to 1 minus root 5, but less than or equal to 1 plus root 5. And I might just move that over a little bit to save myself for when I do the next one. So this is another of my regions that I have to account for. Let's have a look at the final one. Again, turn this into a quadratic inequality. Complete the square. And solve. So this is going to have roots minus 1 minus root 5 and minus 1 plus root 5. So let's draw it up. Okay, and we want the range of values of the modulus of Z which is going to make this greater than or equal to zero. So we'd like to be in that region there. So I want to be greater than negative one plus root five or less than minus one minus root five. So I'm going to need modulus of Z to be less than or equal to minus one minus root five. We already know that's impossible because the modulus of Z we said is going to be positive. I'm going to have it in any way. And we need, or all we need, I should say, not and, or we need the modulus of Z to be greater than or equal to minus one plus root 5. So again, that's another set that I need to include in my final solution. So for each of these highlighted um, ranges, I have to find the intersection of all of these because I need them all to be satisfied. I can't just have one of them being satisfied, okay? Or even two of them. All three have to be satisfied. So I'm going to go to a number line, draw up what I've got. So here's a number line here. Now, this is telling me that I'm anywhere on the number line, so that's fine. This little section, let's mark that one in. Between, minus, between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. So that's going to be, I'll use 
the green color, between 1 minus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. So I'm going from here to here, and I'm anything in between these two. Over here, I've got that z has to be less than negative 1 minus root 5, or greater than negative 1 plus root 5. So maybe I'll use orange for this one. Anything less than this, or greater than this. We also know from our justifications earlier that we said z had to be greater than 0. Couldn't be equal to 0, it just had to be strictly greater than 0. So maybe I'll use red this time. Open circle, because I can't be equal to 0. And then, I mean, we could mark this in, but that's just really the white section there. It's the entire real line. So what I need, I need to find the region of values for the modulus of z where each one of these colors is satisfied, where the red is satisfied, the orange, the green, and the white. And that region of values is in between here. Okay, so I need to be in between minus 1 plus root 5 and 1 plus root 5. So therefore, the modulus of z has to be less than or equal to 1 plus root 5, but greater than or equal to minus 1 plus root 5. And this, this is our final answer. Okay, that's the range of values for the modulus of z.